All right, this is the Winning Cures Everything Super Bowl 53 recap. The Patriots 13, the Rams 3. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books, and you could have won at every one of them if you had just listened to us. Last week, we told you Patriots minus 2.5 was the play. I, you could have teased it up to 7.5. It wouldn't have mattered. We would have been fine. Either way, uh, it's brought to you by TunicaTravel.com. That is the website. Go find more information on all six of their sports books. They got good stuff over there. Go down to Tunica, Mississippi. Put your bets in. There's still NBA season. There's still college basketball season, which, by the way, don't mean to brag. Killing it. 102, 73, and 1 against the spread. That is 58 point, what, 49%? It's, over, yeah. it's almost Call 59%. It 59%. Almost 59% I'm good with against that. the spread. Absolutely killing it over here. Follow the Daily Show. Listen to the Daily Podcast. I give you picks every single day. Every, like, clockwork. I hadn't missed a day yet since January 4th. Been rocking that joint. So, month in, 103, or 102, 73, and 1. 29 games above 500. So, back to the Super Bowl. Chris wearing his Brady the Goat shirt. That's right. You had a pretty good evening last night. It was a good, it was a good night. It was not bad. It was a good night. I, uh, I, I put a lot of, for the degenerates out there that like to gamble in units, I put 8.1 units or whatever it was on. <laughs> what your average bet is, yeah. Yeah, from what my average bet is because, I mean, I, I bet about one unit per college basketball game. Yeah. And some of them, like, I feel really good at, you know, I put two or three. But, like, this one, I felt really good and also put a number down that, like, it wouldn't kill me, but it, w- it would also get me back more than what I had lost in the playoffs so far. That's what I felt That's good pretty about. good, though. That's pretty good because it had been a rough playoff for It you. had been a really rough playoff. Yeah, it had been, it'd been, it'd been I tough mean, for you. I mean, it was awful. I bet the Chiefs, I bet the Saints, I bet, it, like, I bet the Chargers. I was awful. You went 3-1 and one week one, went 0-4. Oh no, oh, no, no, no. I went... Uh, Three and one. Oh yeah, one. no, no, no. I was, I was three and I because I didn't win a single bet after. That's right. You were three and one, one week one. Yeah. You were zero oh and four. Then yeah. You were zero oh and two. It was and really then bad. you, then you won the big one. And then I won the big one. And the big one is what mattered because right. I made all my money back. That's right. Now, obviously, we would not recommend that you put down that much money on a single game. But if you feel that you, you good do, about it, I'm never going to tell people how much to bet. That is a very personal, intimate thing that you don't need to discuss with anyone else. If that you is, want to be a professional, then like obviously you're going to have to work with your bankroll and, well, and you, you look to, at certain but, percentages. But those and people all that. need to know what they're doing, how they're doing it. Yeah, long before you're listening to it. Or, but it, but yeah, that's this. This is a different game altogether. If you're having fun, though. Just, That's just right. do your thing. You, do what you, you want to do. You know what you can lose, and you know what you can risk, and that's it. So It's it's different. It's it's different for everybody. So the, the Cousin Sal from from Jimmy Kimmel Live and Bill Simmons Podcast. And, and Lock Ranger. It In. Lock yeah, It In. That's right. I forget. Yeah, yeah he's on Lock It In now. Um, I'm always at work. I've, I've still never seen an episode. I watch a lot of the YouTube videos. Though. Um, <laughs> he has a saying in the philosophy that says, the less you bet is the more you lose when you win. I mean, that's – well, you know who else says that? Um, uh, Felica. Okay. Felica yeah. says it at the end of every Oh, that podcast. is right. Felica says it too. That's yeah. right. I've heard Cousin Sal say it for a long time. I forgot that Felica does say that. The well, and, the and the other, the other is the thing more is, you lose when you win. If you, uh, you, you can't win if you don't play. That's right. I mean, it's the truth. S- scare money, don't make money. That's what I like that's to say. It, yeah. Because I, I – A, I don't try to do this for a living. I have a job. I really like my job. I've got the best boss in the world. It's me. And um, <laughs> it's not I, bad. that's yeah. And so, I, you know, if if I lose some money, it's not going to cost me my house note, I'm not going to lose my truck. Like, yeah. this just, it is what it is. Sunday was fun. Sunday was a lot of fun. I showed you when you first got here, uh, got a little bored on Saturday getting and ready went for this stuff. Crazy on the prop bet. And I, and I got online and I had a couple of tickets from Tunica on the Super Bowl already, but I had no props. I uh, I bet I bet thirty six props, thirty six. I bet thirty six props. 
I and, and made most, money. I did fit. I did. And most of them laid heavy juice. I won far more than I lost, but I didn't win a lot of money because a lot of them were laying pretty heavy juice. Well, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it was it was fun. I was just bored, and I was like, I like that. Look, I like that. I, I think I'll take that one too. <laughs> and then when I was done, I was like, Oh god, that was that was almost all my bankroll. Um, yeah. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, and made a lot of money. You want to get on into the game. The, you want to get into the game. Let's get into the game. Thirteen to three. So right when the game started, I thought the Rams made an egregious mistake. By well, let's uh, let's start off winning with, the before co- the game. Winning like, the coin flip. It, it, hold on, before we get like before we get into the game, okay. you texted our little group with the Westlight Pirates. Which, yes. by the way, Chris okay. went on with them. Did a fantastic job. That for was a his, lot of fun for That's the Super good. Bowl preview. Good. Um. So go go download their podcast, Westlot Pirates. They're really Fantastic. good at setting up softball questions. Yes, so yes, they, they, make, they, they make certainly are. Sound smart. Um, but you were texting our our group text Sunday morning and said, Woke up "I am like four in the morning." Yeah, you were super nervous about the game. So all the last two weeks, I felt. I mean, I've been strutting around since we beat the Chiefs, and I thought the I, the Pats are just not going to lose this game. They might not cover this bet, but they're not going to lose this game. That Tom's going to get a six, Bill's going to get a six, and they're going to win this game, and they're going to win it from start to finish. And at no point in time was I nervous. Sunday morning, 4, 4.30-ish, I woke up. I could not sleep, and I was just stressed. Like My, my stomach was hurting. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't drink my coffee. I just I got up. I went. I turned on Cheers on Netflix, and I just tried to just calm myself down. The entire day I felt like, I'm walking into a trap. And we talked about it a little bit on the podcast where I felt so confident about it, it was sure to lose. Well, because last year's loss, last year's, and, and you felt... I, ri- I'm, you I'm were so re- confident in last year's that you actually invited people over... I, which I never to, do. ...to watch ever. the Pats game with you. It, it, and it, I, To say it almost ruined a friendship is an understatement. It almost cost one of my best friends his life. And then I would have stood before a jury of my peers trying to explain a crime of passion. Uh, uh, are you are you talking about a my boy let's Cam? Go. Let's my boy go. Cam, yeah, yeah, Cam, love him, I love had him. An death. Absolute we're, blast. We're with still him last we're year. still friends to this day. I love him to death, but he <laughs> he uh, he he really hurt my feelings last year. He had a lot of money on Nick Foles, didn't he? So so next <laughs> this year this year nobody was back to the old what got you there by myself. I had my little time yep. with me and uh, and and I'm. It, by the way, I no. talked about this on on today's Daily Show. Okay. Um, Super Bowl party's a little bit overrated. I don't know about that. I've gone to a few where my team is not in it, and th- and I've had a lot of fun at them. I will tell if, you, if you're I'm interested one of the in few, watching the game, I'm going to watch. I can go and be around a lot of people, but I have no problem kind of being an asshole to people. Like, I'll go sit, yeah. and I'm going to watch the game, and if people come and sit by me and talk to me, I'm kind of like in one ear, but watching the game and like, and then I can respond and I'm, I'm good enough at, you know, I'm married. I've been married a long yeah. time. I can, I can answer questions without really paying attention to what yeah. somebody's yeah. saying around me. And if I come across as rude or disinterested, I'm, I'm just at a point in life where I don't, I don't, don't care. care. I don't mean to be a jerk, but no, I'm I don't not think afraid of being a jerk. I don't think jerk. there's anything wrong with that at all. But I, I always enjoy them. As long as my team's not in it, I have no problem going or having one. Yeah, I can't do it with my team in it. I just can't. When, be when I've got other as people. much money on a game as I did on that one, oh no, that's no, that is also a different factor. That, too. And which it's one of those where it doesn't like the outcome is going to happen no matter what. Correct. But you are well, so know, interested about, in the. game. I don't game. know about that. I don't know about that. Well, I mean, it, you and I are very superstitious people. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, you're you're right. You're right. So I I, I had to burn a chair. I had all of my my superstitious stuff to make sure that I won that bet last night, which is my strange. And my feathers were. It's all, strange for me because ready to go. I'm a Steelers fan, so rooting for the Patriots to win that game was a little weird. That's all right. Um, but you know, it was it was when whatever. you choose to cheer for a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, you've already sold your soul to the devil. So there's no deeper well, down it, this hole. You here's go. the thing that you don't. I didn't choose to root for Ben Roethlisberger. The, well, the team stop. No, the team that I that I cheer for uh, 
just happened to – like, you didn't stop cheering for the Browns just because they hired Hugh Jackson. No, right? no, I believed in Hugh for a, for a minute. There. So, so was, that's, bought, that's where I this goes. I bought into the bill of goods I was sold. But, but that's, that's the thing. It was a little strange, but I had my parents over and, you know, my wife and nine-month-old, yeah. and we watched the game, and I got to listen to everything, and, I, you know, it was – it, it was interesting. I thought it was good. I thought Romo and Nance did great. Here's Romo what I really here's what I, but I really enjoyed. I thought Nance did a good job too. And Nance is finding his place with Romo. Romo doesn't overpower the broadcast to be great. Oh, I agree. And that's something I really enjoy. Is is there are times when he's so good it kind of makes Nance feel like why are you paying him to be there? And and I didn't think last night was that. I thought they both did a, a great job. Um, so it was it was fun. Getting to the game, you want to get there. So, I thought. Yeah, we were we were at co- that point now. <laughs> coin flip happens. Rams win the coin flip, and I thought, man, I really needed the Pats to get the ball, drive down, score, just like they did against Chargers, just like they did against Chiefs. And the Rams say, "We're going to defer. We're going to take it at halftime." And I and I immediately perked up. I mean, I just I'm already watching, and I and I'm watching a little more intense. Like, huh? There's some weird trick, like. <laughs> this team has done this in the playoffs, and you're going to hand them the ball. And you're going to let them drive it down your throat. They kick off. They hit the ball at like the 32-yard line because you can't stop them, and your kicker is obviously hurt or something. He can't get to the end zone. And uh, unless that was strategic, don't know why you would have done that. And they commence to driving it right down their throat. Yeah. And then Tom throws – one of the worst passes he might have thrown in playoff history. It I mean, was he's had a lot of games. He's thrown a lot of oh passes. Yeah. I I thought initially that it was an awful throw, and it was no, it, it was an awful. It throw. it absolutely was. But it I also when you when you go back because when we got to commercial, the first go round, yeah. like I immediately flipped it back and was like, what just happened? And they come. Completely tricked him. Like the coverage looked totally one way, and this it was all Wade Phillips. True, and and, and we'll uh, but the we'll ball get to come, that. but the ball comes out of his hand wobbling like a dead duck to begin with. Oh yeah, I mean he just he throws a bad ball. That's on him. Turn the ball over. So the Rams have it, and I'm thinking, oh, this is not what I need. It. This is not what I need. It. All right, but the Pats have been playing unbelievable defense this playoff. They get yeah. three and out. Yep. Thinking, holy crap. Going our way early, man. Make a huge mistake, and the Rams can't capitalize on it. Don't take any time off the clock. Can't get any drive to flip field position. They just got a punt. Yeah. Pats get the ball back, drive it all the way down the field, get kind of close, miss a field goal. And I'm thinking (laughs) everything's going the Rams' way, and the Rams can't capitalize. At the end of this game, Fast forward through, everyone assumed this is a boring game. Now, you and I see this me. game differently than most people because we are, at our core, defensive guys. Yeah. We like defense. I don't think that these offenses were bad. I don't think they played terribly. I think they were taken out of the game. Yeah. The the people that took and, – and here's the deal. Bill does – we always say this. He's going to take your best player away. Yeah. And usually, I always work under the impression that he's going to take this receiver or this running back. He took Aaron Donald and Indomitian Sue completely out of the game. Yeah. What you can't do as a as a defensive mind or an offensive mind is you can't take a secondary guy out of the game. No, it's impossible. Their secondary until the fourth quarter locked down the Pats receiver. I mean, they just oh, yeah. they just put them on lockdown, and there was there was very few times they were open. Now, when Jules got open. He was wide ass open. It was um, it, it was fun to watch. That's because the Rams kept going back and forth from running man to zone, and and I'm and so I'm watching this and I'm talking to myself because I'm the only person in the room, <laughs> and and it's just like, how do they keep going back to zone when they're running man? Nobody's open. Yeah, nobody. And they go to zone and Julian's standing there saying, "There's nobody within seven eight yards of me." Yeah, Tom hit me the ball, and and Tom hits him with the ball. Uh, it was very strange. 
the Patriots ran the ball on them way better than I thought. Up the middle, up the gut. I was very. I didn't think they could do that. They it absolutely was, ran my, the ball. Up my the gut Sony on them. Michelle over seventy seven and a half paid out nicely. Yes, it, um, was, it was nice. They but they still control the clock. Yeah. They control the line of scrimmage. They got they got more first downs than the Rams by an obscene number. Do you have that number in front of you? How many uh, first downs they got? First downs for the Rams, 14, 22 for New England. Yep. So it, so, it wasn't obscene. Well, like it, it wasn't, you know, thirty eight to whatever it was for the that okay. You know, for the for the Chiefs. For the Chiefs. Game. Yes. Now that was different. But it was just one of those games where I when it became it's a one position game the entire game until the fourth. And I just felt like we're still in control. Yeah. Even though they score a touchdown, we're down by four. So a field goal doesn't help us. We have to score a touchdown. But I never felt like I was in danger of that. Golf looked bad. Gurley looked like he'd been looking the entire year. He wasn't on the injury report. He's not even talking like he's hurt. He's not hurt. Something has happened to Todd I, Gurley. I heard somebody talk last week. I cannot remember who it was, but they, they talked about a running back's confidence. That's the weirdest thing. I can think of receivers and quarterbacks and kickers having confidence issues. I've never in my life heard of a running back having confidence issues. Well, if you look at, I mean, Gurley... Grab the ball, find the hole, run. Like, this is not a complicated thing. Well, they, they talked about bringing in C.J. Anderson as possibly being the reason why Todd Gurley has not... Because Gurley was, was injured... But he's not injured anymore, so like it's a mental thing. That I I I don't know. I, obviously, it's a mental thing because when he's healthy or when he's right, he's he's one of the best running backs in football. He had two targets, one reception for negative one yards. He had ten rushes for thirty five. 30, yeah, about say thirty five, thirty three yards, and in a long of sixteen. That's so right. So he had nine rushes for 19 a whole lot yards. of nothing. Yeah, no, they they took him out of the game, but but they didn't have to do anything special to take him out of the game. No. I mean, it was just incredible. And then golf looked like a first-year starting quarterback in the playoffs that just can't do anything special. Yeah. And and what really surprised me was how conservative McVay was. Like, I, I expect that from, from the Pats, right? Like, and sometimes they'll, they'll do something crazy and, you know, they'll have a trick play. But, like, McVay, and I think it might have been because of the Pats – had so few points that the Rams didn't want to risk it. Yeah, but, I think if the Patriot, the best thing that probably could have happened to the Rams is the Pats get up by ten in the first quarter. Yeah, and because, then because like, then he could justify opening the playbook. But when it's a one possession game, you feel like all we have to do is have one drive with a touchdown, we win this thing. Yeah, and so you just don't make the mistake. You're right. And and playing scared has never been Sean McVay's thing. But I, I think a part of this might have been. Like he respects Bill Belichick a Correct. ton, so you you're constantly trying to play chess, but you don't want to overthink yourself. So then you just continue to do the same thing that you've been doing, which is not working. And they they had one drive towards the end of the game that it it looked like it was going to go the Correct. right way because yep. they they were moving the football, things were going well. And then the Patriots switch up something on defense, and they get the interception. And but oh, so, so uh, before the interception, in my opinion, the player of the game. Now, I, nobody's more proud of Julian Edelman than I am, and and what he did in this playoffs, pretty unbelievable. What he's done in the playoffs is is like not you're just not able to put into words how impressive it is to see a guy with a his skill set and b his size be as good as he is. It's all heart. It's all will. It's all want to. That guy was not born with a God-given athletic ability. He worked for everything he has. Um, Edelman, let's see. Here's his but, numbers. He had uh, 13 catches for 151 yards yeah, okay. against the Chargers. Oh, I was about to say, I think he only had 10, 140 tonight. 10 catches for 96 against the Chiefs and 12 for, or no, sorry, these are targets. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's say. Nine catches for 151 yards, yeah. and he didn't have a single touchdown in the playoffs. Nope. Uh, but nine for 151 against the Chargers, seven for 96 against the Chiefs, 10 for 141 yeah. against the Rams. 
he it's he crazy. was he was the most important player in all the playoffs. All yeah. those big third down drives, him and Gronk got open time and time again. They came up with the big play when they needed it. But I would have given the MVP to a guy that I'm more happy for than anyone else in the Patriots. Started out in Tennessee, played a long time in Tennessee. Ended up last season with that shit show in Cleveland going 0-16. And Jason McCourty gets to play with his brother Devin. First time we've ever had brothers, first time we've ever had twins playing a Super Bowl together like this on it, the same was, team. It, I know and, he, it's one play that he, you're talking no, about. No, there's, well, there's – yes, the, the big breakup um, – In the end zone. In the end zone. But then also – the uh, catch that Cooks should have made that would have been yeah. a touchdown. Yeah. And that was McCourty ripping the ball out, too. Yep. Now, on that, A, crazy proud of him. I would have given him the MVP. They are very, very, very hard on giving MVPs to, to defensive well, players. Yeah. I think Ray Lewis, the last one that's won that or done that. Wow. Um, I, mean, I didn't I, even realize that. And I might be wrong on that, by the way. I, I think he did win that MVP when the Ravens won. Not the second one, obviously. Yeah, the because first that, like, one you, weren't, the Giants. you weren't going to give it to – You can't give it to Dylan. Yeah. Dilf, Dilfer. Dilfer. Didn't even get um, the name right. Or, um, no, but who was uh, – Jamal Lewis, I guess, was the – Maybe the he only did other I don't. I don't remember that game. God, it's a long time ago. I couldn't tell you a lot about that game. But in getting, You keep talking, I'm going to find it. In getting back to this um, – those two plays were the most important plays because the Rams score on both of those if he doesn't get there. Now, get that back to Brandon Cooks. The Patriots talked about how, A, Brandon Cooks was the best receiver and the best player for the Rams last night. He got open more than anyone else. He made big play after big play more than anyone else for the Rams to get them in position to make successful plays. Yeah. But the Patriots kind of talked about this in the offseason where one of the reasons they traded him away is because they kind of knew what his ceiling was. And all of those consistent keep the drive going, sometimes you need like 12 yards, 14 yards down the field, he can get it for you. But when you need a big play in a special moment, he just never seemed to be able to do it the entire year last year. I don't know that he had many this year. And yesterday when he had an opportunity, one of the criticisms that the Patriots word for word had on him is, he doesn't go up and get the ball. He doesn't high point and aggressively tack the football. If in the end zone he's not sitting there waiting like it's a punt for the ball to come to him, then Jason McCourty can't hit him and, and separate the ball from him. Yeah. If he jumps up like Calvin Johnson, like we've seen Larry Fitzgerald, like we've seen the best receivers in football, jump up, high point that football and snag it and pull it to his chest, Jason McCourty can knock the hell out of him all he wants. He's coming down with two feet in the end zone and he's falling out of the back of it, and that's a touchdown. Yeah. And he doesn't do it. And the same thing with the over-the-shoulder pass that came to him. He sits there, and he watches, and he looks for it to fall in his hands instead of going up and getting it. He's not aggressive against the ball. And Bill said, you're better than every receiver we have, but I need you to be better than that because you possess a skill set that you're just choosing to not use. And I'll go after guys like Julian, who's a third of the receiver you are. But but that guy's going to give me all the fight he's got. And are I would. You, I this would is off topic, but you think it, Hunter Renfro is is he Edelman? I mean, I think he is. <laughs> he does look like a patriot. I he mean, he, exactly he really like does it. look like somebody. The problem is, is he might be too good. Like, he's going to get drafted in, like, the second or third round, and Bill's just not taking a receiver there. Yeah. I mean, he needs you on day three. Yeah, no, you're right He needs that. you to have a chip on your shoulder. He needs everybody to have doubted you. Ray Lewis did win. I, I was about to say. He's, However. Another defensive player that I missed before that? Malcolm Smith, Seattle Seahawks in 2014. In that Bronco game? Yep. Oh, I didn't think of that. And then Von Miller. Oh, I knew that Von Miller won that one. I, all right, yep. I knew that. I didn't know Malcolm Smith. I knew. But as Von far as Miller wide receivers go, rushed uh, Cam Cam Newton soul. The last wide receiver was Santonio Holmes. No wide receiver has ever won the MVP and not caught a touchdown. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That's. But I think you see a that many big plays didn't happen when they did. Julian was around. So let's get oh, back. another another defensive player that that won it. Oh three, Tampa Bay Bucks. Dexter Jackson. Yeah, but that was that route against the the Raiders where it was like forty three yeah. to like three or seven or something. It was 
I mean, that was an ass thrashing like we hadn't seen in in decades. Now you're you're right about that. People can complain all they want about Patriots making the Super Bowl. Look at every Super Bowl that we have had without the Patriots, and look at how good those games were, because almost all of them are terrible football games. Let's see. They're all massive blowouts. Well, and so the Broncos and the Panthers was massive blowout. It was twenty four to ten. I mean, it was yeah, but there was a complete domination of one side of the ball. It was, but but it was still a one possession game until late in the fourth quarter. Like you've, it was. You've late. watched games before that were that were one or two score games, and you obviously know one team was far superior than the other. Agreed. Seahawks over the Broncos. Yes, just complete, absolutely. Just tr- um, destruction of one team. However, Ravens over the 49ers, that was now a good that ball was, game. Well, it was terrible, and then it got good after the lights went out. Uh, let's see. Aaron, remember how bad that game was until the lights go out. Yeah. 49ers no, getting right. blown out. Uh, Rodgers, when he won his MVP uh, 2011, that was a good, one. That was was a good Steelers, one. right? Uh, Breeze, when he won uh, that was a good against, one against Colts. the Colts. Yep. That was a good and one. And then Steelers against the Cardinals. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, Manning against the, uh, the Bears. Bears. That was, that was terrible. terrible. Uh, let's see. What was Heinz Ward again? Oh, that was uh, Steelers and Seahawks. Um, and then Tampa Bay and was the Steelers Raiders. Seahawks game good? What was the score? Yeah, it was uh, what twenty nine twenty four something. Okay, like that. yeah, yeah. That's it was, a long it was, time ago. It was a long time ago. I mean, Heinz Ward won the MVP. So that's like, right. You okay, know, that's right. That's <laughs> it's right. been a little yeah. while. It's been a while. Getting old. Been a little while. Speaking um, of getting old, my favorite thing that happened outside. As long as the Patriots win, this is my absolute favorite thing. So I'm not that old of a guy. But I feel like an old man, A, because I, I just don't take care of myself very well. And, and B, I just I kind of th- I've always think more like an old man than not. I, <laughs> I, love, I love the adage that, that, that like age and like wisdom and grittiness can always get you a lot further than, yeah. than like youth and skill and speed. Last night, we have two of the prototypical what the NFL is becoming. Or, or off, what the NFL wants to move to. Off offensive minds yeah. of football. Josh McDaniels, Sean McVay. Good looking, young, crazy smart, highly successful guys that every team wants their team to model. Yeah. And you had two 70 year old defensive guys that are just old geezers that beat the hell out of them. Just yeah. just took those young whippersnappers to school. They, Wade they, Phillips, they took Bill their Belichick. lunch money. And they said, "You no, no, this is not your time yet." So there was an article written this morning about how Brian Flores had a defensive masterpiece. Do you put this more at the feet of him or Belichick? We've been doing this for twenty years. We've, that's, we've that's, been doing that this was for my twenty thought. years. I, I was if like, Brian why are Flores, we... now here's the thing: I want him to be successful because he seems like a great guy in in. Throughout this week of media day, I, I've just learned so many good stories about him and how much the players just worship that guy. Um, and, and, and I want him to be successful. I want the Dolphins to be good. The league is funner when there's more good teams. Miami's been bad for a long time. Yeah. I, I, I've just seen this story too many times. It, it, you can try to be like Bill. You're not going to be Bill. If The only way he's going to be successful is if he tries to go down there and be himself. Yeah. One thing that we've always talked about, college and pros, we firmly believe players in the locker room care more about someone being genuine than someone being, like, fake or this thing that they're trying to be. Yeah. Just be, just be who you are. And if you go in and institute a system like the Patriots, that's fine. But you still have to be you. You still have yeah, to let it model your mentality, your values, and those are going to be different than Bill's. Well, you know you're, why? You're not going to have you were the raised same players. different. Than you're well, not, no, that's true. And, and the culture takes a long time to build. That's oh, oh, you you're not yeah. going to build a culture in a year. I mean, yeah. I think one of the biggest problems the Lions have is I think Matt Patricia tried to go in there and he tried to turn them in the Patriots in one year, and and you've got too many people in that locker room that just aren't going to buy in. Yeah, and 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 you can't force them to buy in either. There's nothing you can do to bend them at their will. They're professional athletes. Those guys make more than you. I, I'm just. This is just not how this game works. I I wish good things for him. I just don't know that he's going to be the second coming of Belichick. Uh, I'd like to see it. Um, I mean, how many guys have we seen do the same thing? That's exactly right. That's I exactly mean, it's, right. it's it's the same stuff every time. 
and he'll and, probably beat Bill because Bill's assistants beat him in the regular season. He seems to to kind of give him one. I don't know. I don't know if that's just. I, I can't explain that stat, but McDaniel's beat him in Denver. You know, all, all of his guys. Rabel was a player. They, and, Rabel was and a player. Beat him in Patricia Tennessee. beat him. I mean, but that's not. That's just this year. I mean, it's kind of happened all a every, lot. all the time. Um. I mean, but the Texans. Have, yeah, you, they they win the they win the battles. Now, yeah, sorry, Bill O'Brien. No, he had not he hadn't beat him. <laughs> he ain't beat him. Um, but it's just one of those things where he tries. He cares more about building a team around what his players can actually do. Yeah, he. It, there is no. I need this type of guy, and I need this type of guy. Tell me, just give me my guys. Yeah. Give me guys that are going to a be versatile. Nobody can play when I put them on special teams. You, no other team in the league, for the most part, there might be three or four out of thirty-two that their best receiver returns punts because that's a dangerous position, and you yeah. don't want that guy back there returning punts. Every now and then, I'll see the Steelers have Antonio Brown back. I'm like, what? What is going on? And and I'm thinking that's just it's just rare. Well, it's, so people. It, Belichick and Saban from the same tree, right? Yep. And Alabama every single year gets blasted and criticized because they have offensive and defensive starters on special teams, on on punts, on punt returns, and whatnot. And it's kind of the same thing it's, because it's, okay. that is a that play matters in these games. That right? play matters. I'm. I, I just hate comparing college and pros. I said no, no, this, I'm, I'm with but, you, but, but listen, like I, but hang on, hang on. No, because one team you have a 53 man roster, and on game day that gets all the way cut down to 43 people that get to dress and play that day, and yeah. that is it. Alabama has a hundred players on their roster on their sidelines, and in over 70 of them are four and five stars. So yeah, you're the starter. You want to earn that starting position? Get out there and play special teams. If you get out, I'm gonna replace you with another five star guy. No, it's, it's totally different. The only I said this when we went when I was on the podcast for West Lot Pirates, um, and, and I'll keep saying it. The only way college and pros are the same is they play on a gridiron that's a hundred feet long and fifty feet wide. That is the list. That is it. They don't use the same size ball. They don't play with any other rules that are the same except for. 10 yards get you a touchdown or first down. Touchdowns count for, for, for six. Extra points count for – like, that's like that's it. N- nothing about those two programs and those two I'm ways not, of doing things are the same. They're just not. Now that your, your rant is done, what I'm saying is special teams is important. Special that's why matter. he puts those and, guys and back and there. Bill cares more about versatility and willingness to do whatever it takes to make the exactly. team better. And if you go to the Patriots and you say, I'm not going to play on special teams, then you will quickly be gone. It doesn't matter how good you are, but they they don't care. There is no, I'm not going to do that. And, no, and You just do whatever you got to do. Right. And, I, I thought initially, uh, because one of the things that you talked about before, like when we were doing the preview, was the going side to side. and Lateral and speed, I, and they struggled and, with that. And how Cordero Patterson, you thought, would be – like he he could they be tried a big to do part it early, of and that's exactly they what tried I thought. it real early. I thought I was they, gonna be right on that, and then they got and, away from it, and then they got away. Well, I mean, he, he well, had they didn't two, have to. He had two rushes for seven yards. That's right. And so, but but early on, when I saw him go around on that jet sweep, I said, oh, and it was the first drive I can't of the believe game. I called it. I, first drive of the game, and I thought Chris done nailed this whole thing. They're gonna go down here and score. If he would have gotten that first touchdown, do you, the amount of money I would have won on the props of him scoring a rushing touchdown. And, and it would have just been yeah. – it would have been insane. It would have kind of been too good to be real. Yeah. So. No, it was still pretty good. Oh, no, but. I had a good night. But that – yeah, I thought – I was like, man, they gave it the ball twice, and he ran it out. I just thought he was going to be the X factor. And, and the reason he wasn't, I think, was just because they realized we can run it up the gut. We yeah. don't have to change our game plan for what we did against the Chiefs and what we did against the Chargers. We can run the exact same plays – so on Burkhead the, on the, looked really good. He looked fine. He just yeah, I mean he averaged yeah. over six yards to carry. So like, so here's here's the, the X factor in this game, and this is what a lot of people complain about the boringness of the game. Man, we're kind of bouncing all over, but that's okay, I think. Um the the thing that makes the Patriots a little bit boring to watch, but also is what makes them so good. They're not afraid to run the exact same play over and over and over again. People are like, well, nobody was creative. Everything was boring. On the drive that they scored on, three pass plays in a row, 
they threw the a it was the only drive that they said we're not going to run the ball at all we're going to throw the ball throw the ball throw the ball oh we're down to two now we'll hand it off to sony he walks in untouched um was that was that the fourth quarter yes because yeah so anyway uh but but the three plays to get him there three pass plays in a row first pass play gronk the next play, they ran the exact same play, exact same routes. The, the Rams said, man, we got to cover Gronk. So they, the, so they put their best guy on Gronk and they double team him. They leave Julian wide open in the middle, yep. hit Julian. Third play after that, the, or the, the, the very next play, which is the third play in a row, they run the exact same play. The Rams know they're running it. They're like, all right, Tlaib, you now get on Julian, man to man, don't let him go. We're going to double team Gronk, and we've got a safety over top to stop one of them if they get it. Gronk is covered like a blanket. He's got just that narrow window open. Now you're, t- and, you're talking um, about the fourth one. That's that's the fourth play. The, well, the third play the was, third was play Burkhead. In, but the third the third pass play in a row, they run three plays in a row. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, Gronk, and, Edelman, Burkhead. And the, yeah, okay, and yeah. Gronk. So they ran a play in between there. Yeah. But all three of those pass plays, they ran the exact same play over yeah. and over and over again. That one, the Rams actually guarded everybody. Nobody was open. Tom found that narrowest of narrow windows. He hits, he throws the perfect pass, the perfect spiral. This is what makes him the greatest of all time is he didn't have a great game, but it was like his exact, this was a model of his season. There were some, some, some drives. He was good. Some drives. He was bad this season. Some games, he looked good. Some games, oh, we were writing them off and the dynasty's over when they needed it the most. I'm going to be the greatest of all time. Yeah. And I'm going to make this play. It, uh, Wade Phillips on the sidelines said, I got to stop Gronk. Stop Gronk. Edelman's open. Man, they're going to keep running this play. I got to shut them both down. He shuts them both down. Tom just beats them. Yeah. Gronk makes a good catch. Rolls, which I thought he was going to score because I nobody, they too. let him catch it. They were like, crap, how did he catch it? And nobody touched him. And then I knew we're getting this touchdown. They're going to hand it off to either Burkhead um, or, or, Michelle. or Michelle. We're the only team that still runs a fullback, I think. Uh, oh, it's a, my dad and I actually talked about that last night. He said, how many other NFL teams have a fullback on the roster? Many of them roster? don't carry one on the roster. The ones that do, they only come in on major jumbo packages. Yeah. Um, and I think he plays, I don't know the percentage, but I think it's more plays than he doesn't. And if you watch that touchdown run, he blows him and Gronk blow the hole wide open. I'm yeah. not kidding. My fat ass falls through that on. Sony Michelle goes in untouched, and he's coming through with power to where if you touch him, you're not stopping him. And it was like he was shocked he didn't get touched, but he was just rolled through. Yep. There was no stopping him. And I was like, well, that's that's gonna be I saw the formation. I saw him, and they ran it right at Sue. Oh, yeah. We're we're already pretty pretty deep in this one. All right. But I do have a question. Okay. This was a, a major topic the week before. All right. Is Gronk done? So everyone keeps asking that. I don't know. They asked him last night, NFL Network. Um, I, I flipped over to that as soon as CBS. Hey, at the end of the game, I didn't like that CBS like immediately went to their new show and they didn't do well, more post-game stuff. You see, it's funny that you say that because my wife was like, oh, my God, is this post-game stuff going to be done because she wanted to watch the show. And I'm okay. like – so anyway, look, it, let them but let us out there and but you're, discuss it. Like, that, then flip to another channel because they got another show on. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what I but, said. But this is the Super Bowl. Well, Give I told me, her I'm I'm watching all the post games. When this is the thing, this is it. Like, yeah. today is one of the saddest days of the year for like for hardcore us. football guys. Yeah, is it's it's seven months before we get any anything like this again. I'm not. Well, I'm not don't don't <laughs> if you bring up the aft, I'm gonna hit you. Like. <laughs> We're gonna fight, and and it's gonna happen. Don't do that. Wait, look, Don't, if, if they start bringing up lines, and not, and it's something that we can actually talk, if it is a good product, because fine. it's gonna be a couple of weeks before we figure it, out it's if it's good be or a not. A couple of years before we know that it's a good product. Well, it, we'll know if it's good enough for us within a few weeks. I don't know about that. So your standards only, be, your standards are definitely lower than mine. There's only eight weeks of the season, like it's, or ten weeks or whatever yeah. it is. So like, anyway. I'm not looking for. We've already spent more time on this than we need to. <laughs> So I flip over to the NFL Network. They're covering this thing from start to finish. And Gronk says, look, I ain't talking about tonight. I'm celebrating. I'm enjoying this, which I have a strong appreciation for. He's like, I'm enjoying this. 
And if it's still, I'll figure it out in a couple of weeks. Tonight, I'm not making any decisions that will affect the rest of my life because any decision I make from here on out is probably going to be a bad one. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not making a lifelong decision. I'm making a might not have should have done that tomorrow when I wake up decision. Yep. But but that's it. And and I have an appreciation for it. I don't know the answer to that. If this is the last we saw of Gronk, it was a hell of a run. I do think that he realizes if if they decrease my workload and how often I go out and let me just block, he can play all 16 games. He doesn't get hurt. And when they need him most on big third down and fourth down conversions, then let's take the car out of the garage and let's hit me. And then I'll go back to blocking. And I think he's totally okay with that. He lasted the entire – this is the healthy he's been his entire career. Yeah, Since, but he, like, but him and Hernandez looked, days. Like, oh, he's slow. But, yeah. but even being – it doesn't – he's never going to outrun anybody. Well, no. He's just going to post them up, go up, get the football, and come down with it. He's bigger and stronger than everybody else out there that's going to be guarding him. I agree. So, so – I think the key to him is if he comes back, if they bring him back, if he doesn't retire, I think it's gonna his entire season next year is gonna look just like this. You don't take him in fantasy. You know, like he falls off the cliff and all statistical matters there are, but it doesn't matter because all he's doing is chasing greatness. He has made it clear last year, he said, I cannot retire before Tom. That guy is 40 years old and I'm in my prime of life. Now, maybe not prime in football days. But but I'm in my prime of life. I cannot retire before this guy. So yeah, I don't I don't know the answer, and and I love his answer from last night. I don't care. Let's not talk about it because any had he said yes, this is the last. Thing. Now it makes me sad, and I don't want to talk about anything that's going to make me sad. Because like I just brain. I just want to enjoy this, and then tomorrow when I wake up and realize football's gone, then then I'll then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with my time. Tell me. So and we'll we'll close on this because it, we've run a little long. Okay, but no, it's the, the last. It's, it's the last a, recap. Yeah, it's the last recap. Uh, Edelman and Brady at the end, like when when they were doing the post game, and if you watch this, like one, it was nuts that they allow the media it, to swarm him. Like that was Atlanta disrespectful. The, sec, the and, security, the security at, at Mercedes Benz. Uh, what's his name? Arthur Blank. Yeah. Arthur Blank absolutely should be ashamed of himself. Yeah. For how poorly his security handled the after the field mob. Oh, it was terrible. That that is strictly just a security thing where you take because all these people have press credentials. Yeah. And you just you take big big security guys. You physically move them out of the way. Yeah. And if they give you any guff, you yank that lanyard off their neck. You take their camera and you send them walking. Easy. And guess what? Everybody else says. Holy shit, we're sorry. How much space you need? Yeah. That, I'm all that's get, it. You need one that's person it. to make an example of, and that's that, it. You yank one um, lanyard if nobody gives you what you need. The the embrace between those two. That was other level kind of, that that looked like retirement, like this is the last time. But it's not. And I mean, see, that's it's, the thing. I don't not. think it's. I don't think it is. But I, it was very surprising that this was such an emotional Super Bowl. God, I'm. I'm not doing this here. Um, I've. I've made the joke after the Chiefs game. They had like a moment like that in the locker yeah. room. I shared it out on social media. I, I've texted to you guys a oh, million yeah. times. And and I've and I kind of jokingly have been saying my wife wasn't a big fan of this last night <laughs> when I shared it out. No, I stand I by the that. statement. If I can ever find anybody in this world to love me the way Tom and Julian love one another, I think I could accomplish anything. The, yeah. w- the, the, there is no boundaries to how successful I could ever be in life. I Look, I've got some close friends. You and I have been friends since oh, we were yeah. in second grade. I, I don't know that I've ever seen any two guys look at each other and just say, I've got your back like that. The only thing I can equate it to is I'm friends with a couple of guys that are in the military and they were, and I've got friends that were in the military and they'll take each other's backs, but there's, there's not that kind of camaraderie. I've got some other friends that are firefighters and they kind of have something like that, but it's not the same. I mean, it is different. Julian has made it abundantly clear. He, he says this on a regular basis. It is my life's work to make him the greatest of all time to where so far away from everybody else, nobody 
throughout all of history will ever come close to him. Julian knows that he, the people talking, their sports writers talking about how great he's been in playoffs and how he's playing his way into the Hall of Fame. I, I think you got to stop there. Nobody loves Julian as much as I do. But, but you, Hall of Fame is the Hall of the greatest of all time. I, I don't know that wide receiver, it's just probably the hardest position to get in outside of like a special teams player. And numbers are just so strange and so weird. If you just say this guy wrecked the playoffs, but he was such an average guy in the regular season, I, I just don't know well, that he's you, ever If you that. don't look at it, it based matter. on numbers. Then yes, I absolutely believe. I've he's never known in. another player to sacrifice his body and fight the way Julian fights for his friend Tom. I just haven't. Yeah. Today has been one of the funnest days on social media. I follow both of those guys on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, which Tom's not on Twitter, but but Jules is, and and uh, and they're at Disney today, and they've been sharing out pictures, and I'm I'm just retweeting, liking, sharing everything I can. And I just, I've never seen two professional athletes that seem to be this genuinely close. Yeah, I've just, I've just, I never, haven't seen that yet. I'm, I'm gonna. Have to I've, check I've it just out. never seen it. It's it, and it's something that I, I very much appreciate. Yeah. The respect that Tom, because you got to think about Tom in these locker rooms. He's 41 years old. The average age, and the Patriots have probably one of the oldest locker rooms in the league. Yeah, and the average players like. 26, 20, like these guys aren't hanging out with Tom after the game. After no, Brad, Dante, like, Dante Hightower is, he's he's been to what, four Super Bowls now? Is that right? He might have been to five. Maybe it may be five. I think he was at one of the losers. He was with the, two of the, the losses. Giants. One of the, he might have been there with this, the second Giants loss. He's been there a while, man. Wait, he, so he was a senior after 2011, maybe? He stayed his senior year at Alabama? Yeah. I don't remember I believe that. So. For some reason, I thought he came out early. He may that, have, either way, I think he I think he came out after 2011. So 2012 through now. So let let's say that he was 20. We'll just say he left early because I don't remember. I don't remember either. Um, it was a one year. We'll, we'll say so. he was 22 his first year in the league. That would put him. He's still less than 30, and he's got like five yeah, Super and Bowls, he's, and he's one, at least four, four, at least four, and and he's one of the oldest players on the team. Yeah, I mean that's that's nuts. Yeah. So you got to think about what is the what does the wide receiver uh, locker room look like with the quarterback? Like this is one of the reasons there are people that wrote this story about the Patriots with Garoppolo, and they tried to to pit everybody against one another because Garoppolo was like hanging out with the receivers more. He had a better like camaraderie with the receivers and with the linemen because he spent more time with them because they were the same age. They were going out and doing stuff. And Tom's going to work and going home. Yeah. And and it's just one of those things where when you actually see these guys in the locker room, it's not like that at all. Like these, I, I would find it hard to hang out with twenty five year olds. I'm I'm well, th- this is who caught passes last night. Edelman, Gronk, Burkhead, Patterson, James White, Ho- uh, Hogan didn't catch a pass any. and Michelle didn't catch a pass. Hogan Hogan missed two. Hogan got cut off. Well, Hogan got targeted six times. Yeah, but, but, he, but he, he missed. He missed, two he missed two big ones, and after that, they never went he back. Got to cut him. off. But that's he got. A, he got another tra- chance late, and he missed that one. He got cut off. Sony missed two, got Done. cut off because both of those passes to Sony were good. He just I don't know why Sony Michelle caught the football at Georgia. He he did just he, fine. He catch the didn't football. catch it a lot. He he, he wasn't. He wasn't James White. No, he's never know? James White, but he still caught the football at Georgia. That guy cannot catch the football in the NFL. No. I don't know, but he ain't going to get the ball thrown to him anymore. That's no. okay. That's okay. Well, no, he, he brushed 18 times for 94 right. yards. He, I think he, he, I think he's nope, fine. No, nope, he's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. Um, it was fun. It was a good year for me. Um, my Browns got out of the cellar, and uh, and my Patriots won another season. You watched the, the NFL 100 commercial. I did, and I loved Tom Brady and Baker Mayfield hanging out. Hanging out, and, and Tom hands his rings, rings to, to Mayfield, so and Mayfield good. looks at him like, like just with a weird face. And So you, whew. hang on, we're, we're, we're going to plug your daily show real quick, and we'll get out of here. You brought up a topic, was it Friday, where oh, Baker, the, the Baker, might, Mike be the Florio. First, yeah, Baker yeah. might be the first NFL player 
to kind of do what these NBA guys do and say, no, when I, when, when my free agency's done, I'm not just re-signing with my home team. I'm going to go play where I want. And, and we know we both got some, some reporting from, from guys that we've heard and read. And, and this is out there for everybody. You just kind of got to dig for it. The, the Patriots were absolutely planning to move up. They had yeah. a trade in place to, uh, to work with the Giants to take Baker Mayfield at two last year yep. to be the heir apparent to Tom. And so I, I am, I am, I do love Cleveland. I love the Browns. I grew up, I married into that. It was later in life. I, I would say I married into it in the, in the late nineties, right before they lost Bill Belichick. When Bill was there, I just kind of liked him. I don't really have a rhyme or reason. And I was pretty young, but uh, I liked Cleveland. I always loved Boston since I was four years old. And I will tell you, if Baker turns into the star we think he is, and then he leaves Cleveland to go to the Patriots, I'm not going to be allowed to to be the two teamer I am, and and I'm just not I'm just I'm not going to be allowed. There is zero family, zero friends in Cleveland that are going to allow that to happen. No, I will no, they, I will have to just be all you like pick and, a side. Oh no, that the, there's no picking sides here. I've made that abundantly clear. Yeah. There's no picking sides. This is not. I have two children and I love them both equally. No, that, that's just that's, that's just the way it goes. Nah, I yeah. can understand it. I can understand it. All right, that's gonna wrap up our Super Bowl recap. We went what fifty two minutes on this thing. Football is over, guys. Whew. Real football is over. Now next week we will have a plan in place to go over, uh, just recap the season. Maybe put a bow on it, yeah. Put a Ooh. put a little bow on it and, and figure out, you know, who who were the standouts, what our projections were, that kind of thing. And we we don't have a full plan in place. We thought about just running through what we what our numbers were or what we thought at the beginning of the season and coming back. We thought that might be a little too boring. Um, we're gonna figure something out. We'll yes. try to make it as entertaining as we can. Yeah, and that's all we that's all we can do. Uh, Wednesday of this week is National Signing Day. About eighty percent of that's already done, so we we kind of have an idea. Say, yeah, we know a little bit about it, but we'll we'll, we'll get more about numbers that on well. Wednesday. Yeah. So in in next week we will come in and have uh, have much more football coverage. The Daily Show every day has got your college basketball picks. I talk about good job all sorts of topics on that. Um, while Chris is out here busting his rear end working on the business, but uh, but yeah, we are. But like I said, we you will not run out of topics for us to discuss so just because football's over doesn't mean that you need to unsubscribe or anything like that as a matter of fact keep sharing it out tell you buddies keep coming in we're doing this year round we're talking all the time we and i don't know how many people are still listening we really do appreciate the support this year yes. this year has been the most fun year the best year we've had with with fan support interactions with folks um the internet is not always a nice place to go but uh but for the most part, man, we've got a lot of good fans, yeah. and they'll interact with us, and and they'll bust their chops when we deserve it, and and they they boost us up when when we need it, and uh, um, it's been a fun year for football, and we're not going anywhere. We're gonna keep nope. doing it. That's right. We, we'll uh, find something to talk about every week. NCAA tournament. We oh, now that'll get a little crazy. We will have a a meetup scheduled. We don't know exactly where yet, um, but we we are planning a meetup in Tunica. For the first and second days of the NCAA tournament, we're going to hang out and watch basketball all day. Uh, you're actually taking off work. Oh, yeah. Well, and, I mean, it, I'll, I'll put it in with the boss. We'll see what he says. <laughs> and I will be taking off work. I'm already mm, yes, already doing that. So uh, so we'll be down there Thursday and that Friday. We'll let you know exactly where whenever we get that finalized. We're, right. we're working on details right now. But uh, Hey, it's not nailed down. So if you are thinking about taking us, Hit throw, us up. Throw us an offer. Throw us an offer. We'll we'll figure it out from there. But either way, this has been the Super Bowl recap. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. Six wonderful, incredible sports books down there. We like all six of them. So go over to tunicatravel.com. Check out more information on all those. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Find more information about us. Share out the show. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. All the wonderful things. Subscribe on on uh, podcast. Subscribe on YouTube. We'll catch you guys again next week.